Hey guys, welcome to my Go for JavaScript developer series. The point of this series of videos is for me to teach you Go, assuming that you know JavaScript and that you know programming and taking everything you know from JavaScript and showing you where it works just the same in Go or where it works radically differently. So what prompted me to make this video is that when I wanna learn Go, I went to look at tutorials out there, but they began from like the really beginning, you know, like what's a for loop? What's an if statement? And I just found myself skipping through a lot of the videos and sometimes I skipped important things, important distinctions that I wish I had noticed. So if the idea behind this series is appealing to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be releasing these videos uh, in a playlist. Now, if you're already convinced that you want to learn Go, you can go ahead and skip to the next video. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to give you reasons why I think you should learn Go in 2020 and why I think it's a great idea. So as you probably know, Ryan Dahl, the creator of Node.js, after having made Node, he moved on to use Go and to the point where he recommends it uh, for large scale web server projects. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below where he actually recommends using Go. Now that he's working on Deno, which is sort of like if he had to redo Node, having learned everything that he learned from making node, what would it look like? That's kind of like the point behind Deno. And when he started implementing it, he started doing it in Go, actually. Uh, then he realized, you know, I need a lot of control over memory and Go is, has a garbage collected at runtime. So he ported everything over to Rust, but Go was his first candidate. Also, you know, TJ Holloway Chuck, the creator of Express and a lot of very popular NPM libraries, he also sort of started using Go regularly and advocating for it. And here's my humble attempt at telling you what it is that they saw and what you might see as well if you try a Go. So reason number one, I think that learning Go will make you a better developer even in other languages. So Go is built on top of really good principles and there's a lot of experience baked into the language from the creators of the language. And you can tell that the abstractions are good and the simplicity and pragmatism that it sort of promotes are very good. And you're gonna find that the way that you write JavaScript, the way that you write C, is gonna be affected by you writing Go code. So I think that overall Go is a language that can make you a better developer at Go and at even other languages. So it's a great language to learn, which brings us to reason number two, which is that Go is a very simple and pragmatic language. You can learn Go really quickly, okay? If you follow this video series, you might be able to learn Go in a couple of hours and be doing productive things because that's the point of Go. It's a very simple, imperative language. There's no complicated concepts, functional style programming. You know, it's for loops, ifs, else. It's very simple. It sort of repeats itself. You know, you see a pattern emerging from standard library and everything where once you learn it and once you see it, it ripples through all of the Go code that you write and it becomes a very productive language. For instance, in my opinion, Go is a great language for doing coding interviews because it's so simple and the slices are so great and a lot of the abstractions are so easy to use. And it doesn't give you a lot of choice, right? Like, oh, do I filter here? Do I map? For loop. It's just a for loop. So it gets out of the way and you don't have to waste time trying to impress the interviewer. Oh, look, I'm, I'm using functional here, but over here I do this kill lover trick. Go is like simple, easy to read, pragmatic. It's amazing for coding interviews because they're not gonna be judging you by how clever you are with the language. The language is gonna get out of the way and let you solve the exercise. This brings us to the next reason, which is tooling. Because it's geared towards productivity and, and making you productive, Go comes with really amazing tooling out of the box. A formatter, you have a, something to write documentation in, an amazing compiler, you can profile, you can detect race conditions, you can do so much with just Go. In other platforms, you would have to assemble a bunch of different tools and, and spend a lot of time setting up a pipeline, which Go just gives you out of the box. And speaking of things that Go gives you out of the box, our next reason is the standard library. Go has an amazing standard library that you can do so much without importing a single third-party library, uh, which is sort of like the opposite of Node.js. So this has a set of very interesting side effects. Because projects mostly rely on the standard library, which covers a lot of use cases, you're gonna find that as you jump from project to project, they're very similar. They use the same things. Once you learn them, you can sort of port over your knowledge to all these different projects. Compare that, for instance, to Node.js and if you're using Express to do a, re a REST API in one project, and then another project you use Nest.js, right? They're very different. They're completely different stuff. Whereas in Node you have, you know, Express, Koa, Happy.js, Ex Nest.js, and they all look very different. In Go, projects look very similar to each other, which is able to make you productive very quickly. 
Okay, so we talked about simplicity and pragmatism. We talked about tooling. We talked about the standard library. The next item on our list is gonna be the fact that Go is a compiled and statically typed language. I cannot convey to you how great it is to just be able to take your code and generate a single binary file that you can just distribute to people and not have to zip your files and then someone has to install Node.js and then they run it. You know, you, you create a binary, here, run this. You don't have to install Go, you don't have to install anything, just run this binary. Of course, there are bundlers that you can use in Node.js and everything, but it's just not as easy and as convenient as it is in Go. I believe that if you've been dealing with Node modules and things like that, after you use Go, you're just gonna fall in love with it. And the last reason I wanna give you today is that if you are a JavaScript developer, at some point you're curious about, you know, I wanna learn the source code for Node.js, or I wanna understand how things work under the hood. You're gonna find that that source code is probably written in C or C++. And if you've been writing a lot of JavaScript code, you're like all the way up here. Dynamically typed, you know, you can do monkey patching, you can just use arrays in really crazy ways. And then when you have to learn C, you're like all the way down here. You manage your memory, you have to deal with memory leaks or pointers, and it can be very intimidating to jump from JavaScript to C. Go sits kind of like in the middle. It's not as difficult as C because it's a garbage collected runtime. Pointers are a lot more simplified. The syntax looks kind of like C sometimes and you have a lot of the same abstractions that as you do in C. So if you are a person that at some point will be interested in going down the ladder from like JavaScript all the way up here to C, Go is a great way to come sort of like halfway there, to dip your toes in the water and see sort of like what C is like without having to learn everything that C requires you to learn. Of course, that if you wanna go, jump from Go to C, you're gonna have to learn a lot of things, but it's a lot easier to jump from Go to C than it is from JavaScript to C. So I've, I never found this reason brought up in, a, in other tutorials, but I think it's great if you are transitioning to a senior position and you just wanna learn more of, more of how things work under the hood. I feel like Go is a great way to begin that approach to later, you know, learn C or Rust. So that's all I have for you today, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're gonna cover the basics for Go.